Hello and welcome to another trip report. My first one on the high speed trains here in Taiwan. And even though these are high speed trains, I can tell you already the views are quite stunning. But this island or this country impressed me in general quite good. Anyway, what I will do in this video, I'll show you the main railway station of Taipei, what's also the biggest railway station of this country, show you the high speed trains. Uh, some views from the train, the railway station of Tainan at the high speed railway line. Um, it's a little bit outside of the city, so uh, we take right now in a local train that will go to the city center. That's one of the advances of taking the old fashioned railway lines. Anyway, I'll tell you all about this in the video. For now, I'll talk way too much. I hope you like this video or this is a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up. If you like to see more trip reports by train, and sometimes also ferry, but mainly about a more sustainable way of transportation, hit the subscribe button. But for now, let's roll the intro. Like I do in basically all my videos, I'll start off with the railway station where I departed from. In this case, it's Taipei Main Station and this station is huge. While I show this railway station, I also tell you something about the different train systems in Taiwan. However, if you are not interested in that, in the timeline of this video you will find chapters. You can also skip straight to the chapter where I tell you more about the high speed trains. A lot of facilities and also the tracks are located underground. Therefore, you'll find these ventilation machines to provide some fresh air and they patent some trains on this. These are no high speed trains though, but they're regular trains you can find in Taiwan. The main railway station building is located above ground and right next to the main building there are some bus stops for city buses. There is another bus stop for long distance buses. I will show you that very briefly in this video, however I think that part of this railway station deserves a own video if I were taking a long distance bus in Taiwan. This sculpture shows the love of father and has specially been designed for Father's Day. It has been demolished after Typhoon, but it's back again since 2018. This railway station is huge and therefore you find a lot of entrances and exits. These are marked with direction and exit number. Apart from that, separate colors will be given to these exits as well. At the east side exit, I also noticed this vintage locomotive. I didn't do a whole lot of research about this, but I know one of the first locomotives that was here in Taiwan has been built in Germany. Anyway, time to go back into the main railway station building. And as you can see, I'm entering here from the south entrance. The south entrances have been marked with the green color. My girlfriend is originally from Taiwan and this was my first visit over here. Because her family lives there and she has lots of friends in Taiwan, I'll be back around here for sure. I did not record this video all in one single go, so we switched between a Taipei main station with and without Christmas tree like it's the most common thing on earth. I recorded this all at the end of November. Located at the square at the main concourse, you will find ticket counters of the Taiwan Railway Administration or the TRA. And these are not for the high speed trains. I'll explain a little bit more about this later on, but there are some things you definitely need to know about this. Apart from the ticket counters at the concourse, there are several vending machines at this spot as well. And even though some of these trains that are being showed on these vending machines might look quite fancy and fast, this here is not a high speed train. Once again, I'll get back to this later on. As you already maybe noticed when I was standing at the concourse, at the first upper floor, so at the second floor as they call it in Taiwan, you will find a lot of places where you can buy food. I mean, Taiwanese people do really appreciate good food. And if you're worried that you don't speak Mandarin and it's hard for you to point out what you want, at many places, and mainly Japanese places, you will find examples of food as well, so you can just point to what you like to have for dinner. 
there are some screens at this spot that will host information about departing trains, but these are not the screens that will host information about the high speed trains. At this level, passenger service information is just very minimal, but it's there. Let's go down to the ground floor, or as they call it here in Taiwan, the first floor. By the way, about directions, there are lots of maps in the station. For this video, I'll be focusing on this section of the station. This part here is for the airport MRT, and I already made a video about that. This section here is the long distance bus station, and that deserves a different video in the future. Apart from these maps, you also find some maps with information about local public transport and some more floor plans. Navigating with these maps can be a little bit challenging, however directions are given in general very well. Departure screens at the central spot at the main concourse do host only information about departures for the main line train, so not for the high speed trains, so the conventional railways. Of course, at the central concourse of this railway station, there are lots of shops as well. Mainly food, and you can get western style food, but of course also lots of Asian food. What is way better by the way, if you ask me. There's also a postal office, and one funny thing, they also sell souvenirs for the post over here. If you want to enjoy a massage, you can do that here, because there's a small massage salon, and it was pretty busy over here. One of the times when I recorded this, my girlfriend went here and she said it was really good. Apart from that, over here, you also find a car rental company, some excursion companies, so it's just a whole lot of things you can find around here. If you're planning to rent a car in Taiwan, the traffic, at least what I noticed, especially in the bigger cities, can be quite hectic. So just make sure you know what you're doing. And in many cases, you also need an international driver's license, so please keep this in mind. At the ground level or at the first floor, you won't find a lot of places where you can just take a seat and wait for your train, apart from the restaurants of course. However, at the moment you're getting closer to the platforms, you will find a lot of these places. One thing I definitely want to highlight is this shop. There is a dedicated souvenir shop for the Taiwanese Railway Administration. And these are basically for the non-high speed trains. For the high speed trains, you also find souvenir shops, but I didn't saw this as physical shops. I think they are there, but I didn't notice them. About directions. Directions are given very well, and like I mentioned before, you will find maps all over the railway station. However, my advice is just follow the signs that are mainly located above your head. There are different signs for the bus station, the metro, the high speed rail that is listed as HSR and the regular trains that are listed as TRA and for the airport trains that are also metro trains but these trains are not a part of the Taipei metro but of the Taoyuan metro system. This has been marked very well all over the station as Taoyuan Airport MRT. MRT, first I thought it stood for Metro, but apparently it's for Mass Rapid Transit. One floor below street level, there are lots of facilities as well. Over here you find most lockers by the way. I didn't notice a lot of lockers at the ground floor and at the higher floors. So, if you want to drop your stuff here before you go into the city and well, continue your journey, no need to worry about that. At many places, from the ground level to the first lower floor, you will find screens that will give departure information about the high speed trains and the conventional trains. This is displayed in Mandarin, so traditional Chinese, and in English. Directions and general information is given very well in English throughout Taiwanese railway stations, I found out. At the first lower floor, there are, of course, lots of places where you can buy some food and convenience stores. Something where mainly Japan is famous for, but what is also absolutely a tradition in Taiwan, is having bento boxes if you're traveling on a longer distance by train. These are basically meals you can take on board of the train. 
The Taiwanese Railway Administration does have several shops where you can buy these bento boxes. And also for the high speed rail, you will find dedicated kiosks where you can buy these bento boxes. For the high speed rail, you will find just like for the conventional trains, both ticket counters, but also vending machines. You can also buy your ticket online, although we use the ticket counters and the vending machines for our journeys. So most important, if you're here, just follow the directions above your head. I can't say this enough. TRA for the regular trains, HSR for the high speed trains. And this also counts for the platforms, although the entrance to the platforms is really close to each other. I'll show you in a bit. For the ticket counters, this might be a different spot, but otherwise you just follow the signs TRA tickets or HSR tickets. This all speaks for itself and there are lots of information points as well. If you arrive here by metro, what is quite obvious, because the metro is a really convenient way to travel within Taipei and New Taipei, you might arrive at different spots of this railway station. You don't always have to go to the main central concourse of this railway station because there are different entrances and exits for the trains as well. This place is not just a big railway station, metro station and a bus station, but a big shopping mall is integrated within this place as well. At the spots where you get out right for the metro, there are some ticket counters for the high speed trains, the regular trains and also vending machines of course and there's a small place where you can buy the bento boxes this was for the standard trains for the tra trains but it's right next to the entrance for the high speed trains the most common entrance for the high speed trains is this one over here it has been assigned what entrance you can take for what carriage so from one to six here on the right and for seven to twelve you can take the other entrance if you accidentally took the wrong entrance, no need to worry, because you can just walk over the platform to the other side of the platform. Also for the TRA, so the conventional trains, you find access gates and this is right next to the entrance for the high speed lines. These vending machines over here are only for the conventional express trains. This might really be confusing if you're not known with this system. At last, before I will go through the gates, I want to tell you a little bit about the bus station. In general, my experience is that the directions are given very well. And like I mentioned a couple of times before, just follow the signs that are mainly located above your head. Because I want to show you as much as possible and also share my honest opinion, I was also a little bit curious about the bus station. And I had to say, I got a little bit lost by getting there. The signs within the main railway station were okay, but somehow you will be diverted through a shopping mall and there I got basically lost. There are some great buses that do cover long distances in Taiwan and some of these buses are just really comfortable, so I definitely want to feature this as well. Anyway, this here is our train ticket for today. Within the high speed trains in Taiwan, you will basically find three classes. The standard class without reservation, standard class with reservation and the business class. We were traveling during the week and there were no holidays, so we bought a ticket without a reservation. If you're traveling in popular hours, I just really recommend you to buy a ticket with reservation. Ticket prices for these trains are fixed. However, if you book your ticket more than a week ahead, you can have a discount of 20 to 40 percent. These are the so-called early bird tickets and these tickets offer one specific train only. The aim for these tickets is basically to spread out passengers as much as possible over different trains. Although the price differences for these trains are way smaller than the price differences can be for some European trains. What might be very interesting is to travel with a Taiwan Rail Pass. As a matter of fact, for our return trip to Tainan, it would have been a little bit cheaper if we would have bought a 3 day rail pass. However, you need to buy this at least one day before you're gonna use it and we didn't do that. Rail passes can only be bought for people who don't have a Taiwanese or Chinese citizenship. 
My girlfriend does have both a Dutch passport, but also a Taiwanese passport. So I think she'll be fine as long as she shows her Dutch passport for this. For now, let's take a closer look at the Taiwanese high-speed rail system. This basically consists of one line only, because Taiwan is not that big. It will go along the west coast, what is the most dense populated area of Taiwan. There's at least one train per hour that literally stops everywhere, so at all stations. The railway station of Kaohsiung, by the way, at the south, it's not finished yet at the moment of recording, what is the end of 2022. During peak hours, there are also all station services that will serve the south part or the north part of the line only. Then there are trains that will only serve the biggest railway stations. Those trains only need 1 hour and 45 minutes to serve the entire network. At last, there are trains that will serve most stations, but will skip the smaller stations. This is also one of the trains we took, because the fastest trains will not serve the railway station of Tainan. Of course, I know there are exceptions when it comes to this, but if you look at the great picture, these are the train types you might find. For the ticket fares, it doesn't matter if you take a fast or a slower train, it's just per distance between the stations. This here is a railway map of Taiwan and the pink line is the high speed line. As you can see, on some parts it makes a different route from the conventional railway lines. And for some cities the conventional railway station is not even close near the station for the high speed trains. This might be a little bit confusing sometimes, also in the case of Tainan. I'll get back to this a little bit later at the video where I will show you the railway station of Tainan as well, both the high speed and the conventional railway station. For now let's go back to Taipei main station and let's go back to the tracks for the high speed trains. There are two platforms and four tracks. The platforms are for north and southbound, although there's not that much more north from here, only one station. And the tracks, well, they are related to the platforms as well. At the platforms you find clear information about where to go to for what facilities, but also what carriage will stop where. Route information for the trains has been given very clear on the screens and also where these trains do come. So you know you're at the right train. This system with the non-stop trains and the all-station services has been managed so extremely well that the faster trains might take over the all station services at the moment that the all station services are just waiting at a regular station. In general, punctuality in Taiwan for the trains is extremely well. Switzerland will be jealous at this. Screens at the ceiling will indicate what carriage will stop where at the platform and this information is given combined in Mandarin and in English. Even though the platform might be a little bit narrow at some spots, it has been marked with lines where you have to stand to enter the train. If you have a non-reserved seat, well, I just advise you to try to be there as soon as possible, so you're at the front of the line, and you can pick a seat of your choice. It was not that busy during our trips though, so we had good seats as well. The trains do consist of 12 carriages and the carriages 10, 11 and 12 are the non-reserved standard class carriages. Carriage number 6 is a business class carriage and carriage number 7 that's an accessible carriage. From the high speed tracks you can also see the regular tracks. This here is a Piuma Hao and these are the highest ranked conventional trains you can find in Taiwan. My girlfriend made a trip report for me last year on one of these trains and I'll definitely make a trip report on one of these trains myself as well soon. Anyway, this is our 12 car, 300 km per hour fastest train in Taiwan coming in. If you might ever have been in a place called Japan, then you might get a weird feeling that you have seen these trains somewhere before. Or as we say in English, déjà vu. Yes, it's basically a sync constant train that has been built by the same company and also the inside looks pretty familiar. And I guess that makes sense really. You don't have to reinvent the high speed rail wheel if it has been already invented and tested. Taiwan is a country where you find a lot of mountains. Therefore the biggest part of the population lives along the coast and especially at the west side of the country. Even though the west side is less rough, so less mountains as in the east side, Still a big part of this railway line is within tunnels, about 17%. 
Therefore, the design has been adjusted a little bit compared to the 700 series Shinkansen trains you find in Japan. Before I'll show the interior, let's take a quick look at the exterior, and there's not a whole lot to say. Screens right next to the doors will host information about the train number, will inform you if this is a reserved car or not, and will host basic route information, combined in English and Mandarin. Apart from that, there are stickers right next to the door that will host the carriage number, and there's not much else to say about the exterior of these trains. The travel times on these trains are never really long anyway. The longest possible travel time you can make, and this is with the all station service, from the beginning to the end of the line, is 2 hours and 25 minutes. I'll start off by showing you the standard class. Of course you have a lot of luggage behind the last row, because all seats do face driving direction. Like in most trains, you will find the overhead luggage racks, where you can store quite a lot of luggage. The seats can be turned around and do face driving direction. Therefore, you have a lot of leg room and quite a lot of people just park their suitcase for that reason in front of them. Seats in the second class don't have power plugs. Instead of that, add some old phone boots, because when they built these trains there were still phone boots inside. You will find now some power sockets and this here are the so-called charging zones. You can see at the facility map where these are located, because you won't find this in every carriage. There are no dining cars within these trains, however at some spots within these trains you will find a vending machine where you can buy some drinks, and during one of our journeys on the way to Tainan in the afternoon there was also a trolley service available. Time for a toilet tour. There's one urinal and there are two regular toilets between the carriages. And if you're traveling with little ones, you can also turn these toilets into a diaper changing facility for babies. For the rest, these toilets are pretty simple and most importantly, they were clean. I found the cleanness of trains in Taiwan, as far as I noticed this by the way, in general quite good. The standard class comes, like you maybe already noticed, in a 3x2 configuration, so 3 seats on one side of the aisle and 2 seats at the other side of the aisle. At the moment you walk through the train, it has been clearly marked before you enter an open compartment in the carriage in what kind of compartment you are. This might be a standard reserved carriage, a standard class non-reserved carriage or business class. Before I'll show you the business class, let me do a seat tour of my seat in the standard class carriage. Seat numbers can be found right above the windows. This is the row number and then A, B, C, D and E for the seat number. A and E are always the window seats, B the middle seats and C and D are the aisle seats. Basic information about facilities will be given at a map you can find within the tray table. These tray tables are relatively okay when it comes in size. They're not impressively big, but they're not small either. They're just okay and they're quite sturdy, what is most important. And I can enjoy my bento, as you can see over here. Right next to the window there's a small table as well, and I think these trains will pass the Geoff Marshall elbow test. There's a sunscreen located at all windows, and you have a really generous amount of leg room. Even when the person right in front of me fully reclines the seat, I still have enough leg room. You can recline the seats with the handle and the armrest, however the width of these seats well, it's not that much. I'm quite a big boy, I have to say, so it might look tighter than it really is. But the leg room is just really generous. There's also a small magazine rack where you find a magazine of the railway company and some safety information. And you will find coat hangers at the side next to the windows. Free Wi-Fi is available, although I didn't test it out. Near the seats you won't find any trash bins. However, during both rides I had on these trains, someone came by to pick up our trash, and near the entrance doors there are trash bins. And of course, you can separate your waste to recycle over here. In general, the standard class carriages are quite the same. The differences in facilities can be found mainly between the carriages. Carriage number 7 though, that's a little bit different. This is the accessible carriage, as you can see over here. 
There's also a bigger accessible toilet, of course, within this carriage. The rest of this carriage is like you find everywhere else in the standard class. The business class carriage is in carriage number 6 and this is only for 66 seats. So this is really a small number and the price for the business class is also way higher than the standard class tickets. It's almost double the price and the standard class product is good on these trains. However, the seats are more comfortable, you have a little bit more leg room, but mainly the seats are wider. Apart from that, there's a footrest and all seats do have their individual reading lights. The seat numbers are slightly different compared to the standard class, because this is a different formation. So A and C and D and E will be next to each other. A snack and drink service is available in business class. For the next tiny part of this video, I'll show you some views from the high speed train between Taipei and Tainan. I'll get back to you after that because there are some things that might be very useful to know the difference between the high speed and the conventional railway line station. Even though the high speed line is definitely not covering the prettiest part of Taiwan and there are lots of tunnels and sound barriers that will just block the view every now and then. The views are still pretty nice from the train I have to say, but it's nothing compared to what you can find else in this country. The railway station of Tainan, this might be a little bit a confusing situation because you will find two railway stations called Tainan. The high speed railway station where we arrived, that is listed in Google Maps as Tainan station and another railway station that's just being mentioned as Tainan in Google Maps. This is really confusing and this is something you find for a lot of high speed railway stations. You find similar stations that do have exactly the same name after the town but are non high speed stations. I think it would have been great if they would added something at the high speed railway stations like for example HST railway station. Not on all of these high speed railway stations you find connecting public transport by mainline trains. And even though it doesn't show it on the map over here, at the railway station of Tainan you will find a connecting regular train that will bring you straight to the conventional railway station of Tainan. The infrastructure for the conventional railways and the high speed railway system is totally separated from each other. The high speed railway station of Tainan does have two platforms and four tracks. Honestly I don't even know if this station is located in Tainan or not, but I suppose it's in the outskirts. By the way, don't forget to bring your ticket out, otherwise you can't access the gates at the moment you want to leave the station. At the railway station of Tainan, departure screens have been mentioned with north and southbound trains and this is for the high speed trains only. There are lots of shops and places where you can go to for information and buy tickets and also where you can just take a sit and wait for your train. The conventional railway station 
has a different name than this railway station and information about departing trains is also given separately from each other. At the front of the railway station there's a bus stop, a pick up and drop off zone for railway passengers by car and a taxi stand. And right next to that you will find the conventional railway station that's called Shalun Station, if I pronounce it right, but probably I screwed up. At first we walked into the wrong direction when we arrived here. However, this is very well integrated within the high speed railway station. Basically, at the moment you leave the high speed railway tracks and you leave the gates, you go straight left and then you end up at the conventional railway station where you find trains to the center of Tainan. It's about a 24 minute train ride. For these conventional trains, you can also travel with the use of an easy card, and this is what we did. The easy card is a smart card for public transport in Taiwan, what you can use for local public transport, and you can also pay in a lot of shops with the easy card. These trains look rather simple, but they're quite good. I mean, these are just simple commuter trains, and they're good for the job they're serving for. Because our journey hasn't been finished yet, I'll show some views from the train between Tainan High Speed Railway Station and the conventional railway station of Tainan. One thing that's pretty common in Asian is having jingles in trains. At the moment we were here, the main station of Tainan, that's close to the city centers over the conventional trains, was being modernized. So I won't do an in-depth station review. Apart from that, this video is taking way too long already. Most importantly, there were lockers, so we could drop our stuff the second day and explore the city again. From here on, we also took a cab to our accommodation, what was way more affordable than taking a taxi from the high speed station. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Once again, like I said in the introduction, if you did so, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. Um, before I really end up this video, I want to tell you something about other trip reports you can find in a map in the description of this video. Because in the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports I did by train ferry and sometimes bus. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train and sometimes ferry traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. Of course you can also subscribe to this channel to see new videos and you can also find these videos on this channel. Thank you for watching and see you on my next video.